This is SOLIDWORKS Tutorial Lesson 2.2. In this video, we'll do the revolve of the base of the pulley. First of all, we're looking at the drawing of the pulley here. In this view over here, we can see a section drawing, and it's labeled A to A. If we look over here in our front view, we can see the A's right here. So we can say that this section view is dividing the pulley in half and looking that way into the part. So this is actually the cross section that we'd want to revolve around. And if you remember in our plan, we're planning to revolve this whole base without these fillets and without this groove, because we're going to do those in later steps. So in this revolve, we're going to draw three rectangles, which are the basic shapes of this part of the pulley. So one rectangle up here, one rectangle in the middle, and then one rectangle in the bottom. And then we're going to leave some space, and we're going to have the origin be right here in the middle of this cross section where we planned for it. So let's switch over to the SOLIDWORKS window and we'll go ahead and create a revolved boss base. We can see in our property manager that it's asking us for a plane. Let's remember which plane we want for our correct orientation. This sketch is going to be drawn right there along that line so it's not on the front view, it's not on the top view, but it would actually be on the right plane. So we'll go ahead and choose the right plane for that sketch. All right, we can see our origin right there in the middle. Let's go ahead and draw a center line, and we're already going to create the axis that we're going to revolve our part around. Okay, when we're drawing a line, it usually wants us to draw more than one line, but we can just hit escape when we're done with the tool. And we've got the one line drawn. All right, let's go ahead and put in our rectangles. There's two different types of rectangles, the corner rectangle or the center rectangle. There's also some other parallelograms. We're going to use the center rectangle because we want these to be centered above the origin. So we'll just go ahead and go above the origin and put these in. So this is our base. We'll put in another one. You can see that dotted blue line is kind of showing us where that center will be in relationship to other things. You can see that those green boxes are showing relationships that are popping up. So we'll talk about those as we go along. Okay, so we'll kind of make it kind of three boxes. Go back to our drawing just to make sure. Okay, so we know that the bottom is the widest, then it's really narrow in the middle, and then this top one is a little bit taller, but not as wide as the bottom. So we're pretty good here. You can see that all three of these rectangles are blue, and it says underdefined in our status bar. We want to fully define the sketch. And if you remember from last time, to fully define the sketch, we need both dimensions and relations to fix it into place. So let's zoom in a little bit. We already have quite a few relationships here. There's a lot of horizontal relationships. There's a lot of coincident relationships that come from the, the blocks that these parts come in. Let's start by making the center of these boxes all vertical from the origin. So we're going to select all three of these points. So click that one, hold control, and click the other two. You can see that it's putting in this, putting all those points in this selected entities box. And it's showing the relationships that we can add between them. We're going to add one more, which is the origin. And we want to make a vertical relationship between all, all four of those points. You can see that those green boxes came in. And now all of those points are above the origin. One thing that we can do while our sketch is underdefined is we can click and drag on corners and see how it affects our, our shapes. See this has to stay above the origin. You can see that the center is only moving up and down, but the box size can change wherever it wants to. And you can also see that it's not connected to this box here. Let's go ahead and make those collinear. So we're going to click on this line here, hold control and click on this other line and we're going to use the collinear relationship. We'll go ahead and accept that. Now when we drag this box around, it's going to kind of bring that other one with it. Those have to be collinear. All right. You can see that this bottom one is already connected with a coincident relationship between this point and that line. So you can have a coincident relationship or a, a collinear relationship to do the same thing there. All right. Let's start putting in some dimensions. Back in our drawing, we can see that the whole 
diameter of this pulley is 7 inches, we can see that this inner part is 1.75. We can see that this inner circle is 1 inch. And last, there's another diameter over here, which is 5. So now looking back at SOLIDWORKS, if we have those four dimensions written down so we remember them, we can go ahead and dimension them. Let's start with the outer first and work our way inwards. So let's make a smart dimension between this outer line and our center of our pulley. We have two options here. We can define it by a radius, or if we pull it down, we can define it by a diameter that's going across our center axis. Because our picture shows a diameter, we want to define it as a diameter. So we'll go ahead and drop the dimension here. And this one is 7 inches, so we'll go ahead and type 7. You can see that it adjusts for it and moves everything up to adjust for that smart dimension. Let's add the inner one here. Remember this one was 5. Again, we can go radius or diameter. We'll go ahead and drop it down as a diameter. And that's 5 inches. All right. And that pushed that whole thing down. Let's see. Let's do this next one. So we'll go ahead and insert that one in as a diameter as well. And that's 1.75. And one more, which is this inner one, which was 1 inch. OK, so you can see that those four dimensions are there. You can even move them around so they look a little bit better. And if we zoom in, you can see that those lines have turned black because we know how far they are away from this center line, which is defined. You can see that all of these side lines are blue, which means that they're not defined yet. If we click and drag, we can still make those rectangles bigger and smaller. But we can't move them up and down. So now let's go back to our drawing and look for those horizontal distances. All right, we got all of these diameters. And we can see that this 2, this 1.5, all go with those horizontal distances. And then the last one is this 0.25 thickness for that thin part. OK, so writing those down so we can remember them, we have the 2, 1.5, and 0 0.25. So let's go ahead and put a smart dimension in. And this will be the length of either this line or the distance between these. So we know this outside one was the 1.5. This inner one here is the biggest, which was 2. And this inner one here is the 0.25. And you can see those turning black as I put those dimensions in. That means they're, they're getting defined. Now there's nothing blue left, and it says fully defined here in the bottom. OK, so now that our sketch is fully defined, we're ready to go ahead and exit the sketch. We'll go ahead to the Features and do the Revolved Boss Base, and we'll select that sketch. All right. So in this Property Manager, we can see different fields that need, need to be filled. This first one is asking for the axis of revolution. So we can go ahead and put that center axis in. We'll have it go blindly 360 degrees. And then down here is the selected contours. What shapes do we want to revolve? So we'll go ahead and click all three rectangles so that all three are revolving. And then we'll go ahead and accept that. So you can see here that we have the base of our, our pulley that has been revolved all the way around. Before we end this feature, I want to go back a little bit and show you something that we can do to the sketch that will simplify the revolve step. It's not too important that you do it this way, but this is another option. So let's go ahead and hit Control Z and go back into our sketch. So we'll left click on the sketch and do Edit Sketch. Okay, you can see that there's lines here between the rectangles. That means that these shapes are enclosed. SolidWorks, when it's revolving or extruding something, it looks for closed contours to extrude or revolve. If we use this Trim Entities button, and we use the trim to closest, we can go ahead and click those center lines. We'll need to click twice because there was two of them, one for each of the rectangles overlapping. So we'll go ahead and delete those. Now we have a closed contour that has the whole shape of the pulley. OK, 
Okay, so now when we go and exit the sketch and we go to the Revolved Boss Base tool and we click on that sketch to revolve it, it automatically should know that that whole sketch is a closed contour and all of it will be revolved. There's no selections that we can make for different shapes in there. So that's an extra step in the sketch phase which saves you time in the revolve tool, but you can decide which one you like to do.